100 million years ago, during the earliest period of the late Cretaceous period, called the Cenomanian stage, in the location where is now Southeast Asia, an enormous tropical forest filled with extreme diversity of plants and animals was flourishing. Thanks to paleontologists, we now have quite a good understanding of what this forest looked like and what creatures were lurking in it. It was a tropical forest dominated by conifers. Apart from conifers, angiosperms and ferns were also abundant. Dinosaurs were still alive and lurking in the forest, with various kinds of alien-like insects living in their shadows, of which a lot are extinct now. Some of most iconic insects from that period were hell ants and predatory cockroaches. It was a seasonally dry forest, and it was prone to forest fires. How do we know that? In the area where now Myanmar is located, Burma by its previous name, a rich coal deposit is situated deep under the ground, and there is something quite valuable in the coal that did help us find out the secrets of this ancient environment. Inside the charcoal, people are finding amber. This is roughly 100 million years old fossilized tree raisin that holds more evidence about the forest that we could dream of. This type of ember is widely known as Burmite, by the previous name of the country. All these iconic insects, like hell ants and manipulator cockroaches, were discovered inside pieces of that ancient raisin, as well as hundreds of plants, invertebrate and vertebrate species. We know exactly what type of plants were living at that time, and this information largely helped us to understand the paleo environment even more detailfully. For example, paleontologists have found remarkably the diverse list of plant species, all sorts of conifers, ferns and angiosperms, all trapped in amber. Only very few things can give us more precise details about that forest itself. Selenginella is not an uncommon find in amber, it suggests seasonality in weather and year-round wet vegetation by the creeks. We also know that this forest was close to the sea, because amber pieces were found with burrows of clams in them. Need more evidence about the close sea theory? Sea water animals like ammonites were discovered in Burmit amber too. And now, let's check some remains of this ancient forest that are in my personal collection. Over the time, I did collect a handful of gorgeous plants in amber. As I already mentioned, what I have here are mostly branches of different conifer species, a salanginella plant with reproductive spores, and few beautiful ferns. I wanted to make some macro photographies for these pieces, therefore I need to repolish the pieces and some of them need love a bit more than just polishing. And so I have uh, quite a bit of pieces of amber with plants today, more precisely 11 of those. Most of them needs a repolishing, except one. One needs some more love. There's a lot of area that's not very really beautiful from this other side, and so I will make it a little bit more aesthetic with the other side. But I have to be extremely careful because uh, there's cracks all over this piece and I need to be extremely gently with it. Let's not waste a lot of time and fix it up, repolish pieces and I will show you these plants in whole glory. So on these uh, scratches I can't go with Dremel because this plant is almost outside of the piece. So those I will do gently with sandpaper over 1500 grit but this, yeah, this one I will try to do with 600 grit. Okay, I think I won't go any farther. Just remove the hard scratches, now I will smoothen it more with sandpaper of higher grit and I will leave it as is, because I don't really wanna make it as flat, just to be even with this side, you know, because I kinda, kinda like this bulky shape. Too bad it's cracked from this side, but it should be sufficient as is. 
All right, let's go to next step. Our next step is, let's make it shiny, bit by bit, with the sandpaper. Okay, we are done recutting the piece. It's a bit better now, I think. As, as good as it, as it could get, I think, to not lose too much mass. Now we are ready to repolish the pieces. Not all of this needs repolishing, but I will do it anyway, just for the sake of it, because repolishing pieces also protects them from oxidation, so let's do that. is repolished so it's time to wipe off the polishing paste and see how sparkly it became and we will start from the biggest plant this one there was scratches in this place so let's see if they are gone now Looks like they are gone. Gone. Hmm, this side I did fix a bit, not much, eh, but a bit. I think it's better now. And all of them are ready and repolished. So now let's prepare a white background for them to watch them better. I'm ready to make some photos and we have all the specimens here safely and now we have to adjust adjust the lights so let's do that And my biggest and most impressive plant was hard to make decent macro photos for because of the rounded dome on the front of the piece. It measures a bit over 4 cm in length. For sure museum grade piece. As for the species, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like Metasequoia, a still living plant species. And I would guess this plant was quite abundant in the Cretaceous period because of my 11 plant specimens Five of them is this exact species, so we'll see more of them in this video later on. Whoa, this biggest one was quite a pain to do because it has the a bit rounded surface and when it's rounded and when the light shines it little bit refracts uh, the image and uh, it was quite hard to do this one. Let's take another one, let's take this nice i think it's a fern and it is indeed a fern but i can't tell you which species of fern there are so many species of these plants and they are extremely unique ferns are very ancient family of plants they predate the beginning of the mesozoic era 316 million years ago and they are still very successful today fern is a member of group of vascular plants that produce via spores and have neither seeds or flowers. Unfortunately, when looking at plants in amber, often plants are in a lot worse condition and are a lot more oxidized compared to insects. Insects do preserve so well because of their chitin and hard exoskeletons. Hmm, I want to try this one next. This one should be okay photo because this piece is quite flat. 
and hence we should be able to do a photo. So let's put it under microscope. This is the same species as the first biggest piece I showed. It's a metasequoia, probably. While branch of this piece is quite interesting, there are some more surprises in this piece. First surprise is a flying insect, I, and by the looks of it, it's laying eggs. Insect is around 1 mm in diameter. I was able to make this picture only because surface of this piece is super flat. And then, looks what there in the corner looks like another surprise, a 2 mm in body length cricket, quite interesting looking fellow, most likely a juvenile. In fact, this piece has one more tiny cricket from the other side, looks very similar to the first one. I would guess these baby crickets were siblings. And yeah, one flat piece and instantly a lot easier to make pictures. Most of these pieces are called cabochons, and cabochons are a little bit rounded domes, and so the light refracts a lot more, so it's a lot tougher to make pictures. Yeah, cabochons are not great to look at inclusions. At least we have some flat pieces too, so let's take a look at this one now. Looks familiar? One more metasequoia. Beautiful texture and color in this one, won't talk too much about the same plant, in this piece I would focus on the ember itself, lots of stuff inside making this piece very interesting to look at. It's quite thin and in perfect shape. I would bet this one would be an amazing 100 million years old necklace. Now it's this fern. I think this one will be one of the most aesthetic pieces for jewelry. It will be great ring or something, in similar fashion. This is also a fern. It's very different from the previous fern I have showed. But it's very black and the texture of the plant itself is very smooth when looking through the microscope. However, this is absolute gem quality piece for the jewelry. Necklace or quite big ring is perfect for this piece. Even silver wouldn't be enough to make it fair for this one. I would use gold wrapping. Easily one of my favorite pieces from all of these plants. This one is yet another metasequoia. I can't explain why, but I love this one so immensely. Amber color is honey-like, and plant color is on the red side. Shape of the piece is my preferable, which is freeform. Just an awesome trinket, in which I wouldn't drill any holes ever. Now this piece, this piece is a botanical mess. I can see clearly some sort of leaves and many of them, but as all other leaves, these are quite black leaves and it will be really challenging to make any macro photos, but let's try anyway. As expected, I failed to make any kind of good photo. To be safe, I would call these plants a unidentified botanicals. But I think that it could be just a grass, you know, the one which cattle like horses or goats eat. Still quite interesting to find it in amber. The time has come to show some conifer tree branches. I have two of those. One is extremely photogenic in a nice round piece of amber. Another one is less photogenic, but still cool. I can't identify any of those two to be more specific than just a conifer. Today there are about 615 conifer species. I wonder how many there was 100 million years ago, growing in the dinosaurs infested forests. To be honest, 100 million years ago there could be less diversity than today, but who knows. Final plant is called Selaginella. It's the only plant in the genus of vascular plants in the family Selaginellae. Vascular meaning it also reproduces by spores, and the specimen I own has those reproductive spores, spores fossilized on top of the specimen, which is very cool and quite rare. Selaginella does still exist today. It occurs mostly in the tropical regions of the world. 
with a handful of species to be found in the Arctic alpine zones of both hemispheres. And yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this information slash polishing slash macro photography session kind of video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will make more amber and fossils related content in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.